What's going on everyone? Aaron here from Happy Hydro and this is going to be just a quick video on VPD. Uh, that elusive stat that's really kind of a make it or break it for our plants in our grow room. So in this video I'm just going to be going over uh, what VPD is, why it's important, and how to control it. So let's go check it out. First of all, VPD stands for Vapor Pressure Deficit. And what this really means is that it's a way to calculate air's thirst for moisture. So there are three main components that go into the VPD calculation. One being actual vapor pressure or AVP, which is your current moisture in the air. Two is your saturation vapor pressure or SVP, which is just the maximum amount of moisture that the air can hold. And your third part is the deficit, which is the calculation between what your moisture level is at and the maximum that your air can hold. So you're probably asking yourself, why should I even bother with a VPD? I don't understand it. It doesn't seem like it's that important but in reality there are huge benefits to controlling VPD that's because it really controls how the plants respirate and photosynthesize having a low VPD means that the air is very moist and what this can lead to risks of mold or other plant diseases because of an inefficient transpiration rate on the other side we have high VPD which is the air is very dry and this could cause the plant to be dehydrated and not have enough nutrients to grow so when you get that sweet spot for VPD, you get a lot of benefits. Some of those benefits include optimal growth, which would support efficient water and nutrient uptake, disease prevention, which this is going to reduce the risk of plant disease and fungal infections, enhanced photosynthesis. This balances the stomatal openings, which allows for better CO2 intake, resource efficiency, which all that means is you're going to save energy, you're going to save water, and you're going to reduce costs. Finally, a quality yield. Properly balanced VPD is going to ensure improved plant health, flavor, and overall quality. So I know I talked about the low and high VPD points, but what we really want to know is the sweet spot, right? That range of numbers that we have to hit to ensure that our plants throughout all stages of life are getting the optimal amount of moisture. And since VPD is the relationship between air temperature and humidity, there are certain ranges that we're trying to hit at different stages of life. So when looking or measuring that sweet spot, we're going to measure it in kilopascals which would be KPA. So for the seedling or clone range, we're looking for a 0.6 to 0.8 KPA. In the vegetative stage, we're looking for a 0.9 to 1.1 KPA. And finally in the flower, we're gonna look for about a 1.2 to 1.5 KPA. So what I've found is that the best way to control VPD is getting a little help. Best help that I've found is using AC Infinity's Controller 69 Pro. This has an actual VPD setting on there that you can calibrate your tent to find the perfect VPD. It's a little confusing at first, but we're going to teach you how to gain that knowledge and hone in on that grow. So the VPD mode in the Controller 69 really has two trigger types. That's a low VPD or a high VPD. You're going to go into VPD mode and from here you're going to be able to set the trigger points. Quick disclaimer, I did mention there are two VPD triggers, a low VPD and a high VPD. In VPD mode, either of those triggers can be simultaneously activated if you are not viewing a specific trigger. You're going to want to turn off the trigger not being used so that it doesn't interfere with your active trigger. So when you're setting up that controller, those two triggers, like I said, you're going to see is going to be a high VPD or a low VPD trigger. And when you set your high VPD trigger, what this is going to do is activate the devices in your tent so that it either adds moisture or cool air to your grow environment. So some devices you may have hooked up in this would be humidifiers or air conditioning units. The other trigger is the low VPD trigger, which inversely activates devices in your tent to either remove moisture or heat the air so that we're back to that low VPD trigger set point. So some of these devices may include dehumidifiers, heaters, or even exhaust fans. While running in VPD mode, I found that the VPD trigger works best to have something keeping either the temperature or relative humidity stable than adjusting the other on a VPD trigger. This is because VPD is just a ratio between temperature and relative humidity. For example, 
I have the inline fan set to manage the max temp, and I have the humidifier set to the high VPD mode, managing the humidity. Since we recall that VPD is the relationship between temperature and humidity, in addition, I also might have a heater in a low VPD trigger. High VPD example. What if my air is too dry? Well, for this example, at 44% relative humidity and 82 degrees Fahrenheit, we're at a 1.9 kilopascals, or KPA. And for VPD, this is pretty high. Our target range is 1.2 to 1.5. To lower the VPD, we hold temp consistent at 82 and we increase humidity to 60% and now we're set at 1.3 kPa VPD. A setting like this would look like in flower where the goal is 1.2 to 1.5. So the device might be a humidifier, the trigger would be high VPD, the setting 1.5 kPa or 1.4 if you're struggling to keep it in that range. You can also do a buffer kPa. I would recommend a 0.1 kPa for your buffer or consider raising the number if you're having trouble staying in a range and your devices are turning off and on a lot. So also your transition KPA will be 0.1 as well. For a low VPD example, I have some solutions for you. You can either raise the temperature. Raising the temperature can increase VPD. Warmer air holds more moisture, thus raising the temperature will decrease relative humidity and increase VPD. Set heater to trigger on at low VPD, like 1.1 in bloom. Or you can decrease humidity. Lowering the humidity level will also increase VPD. This is because lowering the moisture content in the air without altering the temperature increases the deficit between the amount of moisture the air can hold and the actual moisture present. Activating a dehumidifier or increasing ventilation with the exhaust fan will put in more lung room air, which is typically cooler and drier. Set the exhaust fan to trigger at a low trigger number, like 1 or 1.1 in bloom. Exhausting from high humidity will also affect your temps, which is why controlling BPD is like chasing your tail sometimes. Here's another example. If we're flowering and it's 77 degrees Fahrenheit in my tent and a 64% relative humidity, VPD is 1.1, which is low. If I have a heater on low VPD trigger of 1.3, the heater would kick on and raise the temps until it reaches 81 degrees Fahrenheit, where the VPD would meet the minimum range for the heater to kick off at 1.3. So our device would be the heater, our trigger would be low VPD, our setting would be 1.3 kPa, and our buffer is 0.1 kPa and our transition is also 0.1 kPa. Depending on your environment, people use heaters with a low VPD trigger or exhaust fans on auto mode with a high temp trigger. So I already have so much jam packed in this video, I didn't want to leave out leaf temp. And leaf temp, all it is, is that there is going to be a change in temperature from the air around the plants to the actual temperature of the plants. And a lot of these calculators will give you an option to you know, adjust for that change in temperature. The only real way to get the temperature of those leaves are to use one of those infrared thermometers. Don't forget to turn off unused triggers to make sure they're not interfering with your VPD triggers. So as we're in search for a perfect VPD, using AC Infinity's Controller 69 Pro, it allows you precise control of your grow room's vapor pressure deficit. And you're going to be fostering healthier plants and improving overall quality and yield. So setting your inline fan on auto with a high temperature trigger, setting your humidifier on a high VPD trigger, and your heater on a low VPD trigger is going to get you 90% of the way there. Now the fine tuning comes into understanding your own environment and even what zone you live in. Now us at Happy Hydro, we live up here in the Northeast, so it's a little bit different than when you're in Arizona or Southern California. So if you guys got any hints for me on how you're growing down there, drop a line in the comments. And until next time, stay happy friends.